Greetings. Welcome to the Yang Style Tai Chi short form course. I'm Michael Gilman. Well, we've reached the place where we're going to be working on the end of the short form. And so this is a wonderful time. It's sort of a time of uh, endings and beginnings because once we've sort of learn the form, learn the sequence of movements and uh, got that under, you know, under control, then the real work begins and I'll talk about that after we've um, covered the last few movements. And so let's review up to this point, all right? So from the back, Commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press and push. Fist under elbow. Step back and repulse monkey. Slanting flying. Raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Needle at sea bottom. Fan through the back. Turn and white snake puts out tongue. Roll back. Press. and push. Single whip. Waving hands like clouds. One, two, three, four. C. 
single whip. Fair lady works at shuttles. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Snake creeps down. Step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Turn around and kick horizontally. Shoot a tiger with bow. Okay. So um, I hope that you're enjoying this and uh, you know, learning Tai Chi is not easy, but it's not difficult. And it's a wonderful lifetime skill that once you've put the time in, it's like learning to ride a bicycle or something. Once you put your time in, you're always going to have this. And with Tai Chi, you're going to have it, you can have it the rest of your life. Yeah. Now, I wanted to say something about kicking, turn around and kick horizontally. Last week we worked on, as I said, this carpet is sticky and the shoes that I have on are sticky. So it's not easy. And if you have any kind of knee problems, you know, it could aggravate it. Um, so what I suggest, and we were, work, we were talking about that in classes this week, what I suggest is just leave out the turnaround. There's no reason that it's there, really. I mean, it's not... I don't think it's one of the most important elements of the form. It tends to throw people's balance, uh, their concentration, their uh, sort of meditative state off a bit. And so what I would suggest, if you have any problems with this, if you're, on a, you know, you're at home and you have a shag carpet or whatever, uh, you're in sand, uh, soft sand, it's very difficult to do this in soft sand, just leave it out. So here's what I would here's the way I would do that. So step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Now instead of turn around, we just put the left foot out, bringing the hands up, and kick horizontally. Shoot a tiger with bow. It's just it's very simple, straightforward, and easy. And there's nothing. There's no reason. You know, that you have to feel like you're shortchanging anything. It's just one movement that you'd be cutting out that is not really all that energetically important. Okay, so you retreat to right, retreat to right tiger. Step forward with the left foot. The hands come into in front of the body. Then 
you kick horizontally and then shoot a tiger with bow. All right, so um, please uh, feel free to do that. All right, let me uh, kind of demonstrate the next, the finishing three movements, and then um, I'm going to call in some help so I can demonstrate um, the applications, and then we'll work on them. All right, so let me, let me demonstrate from this point. Step up, deflect downward, and punch. Withdraw and push. And finally, conclusion. of Tai Chi Chuan. All right, so if I can get Rose to uh, come on in and help me. Uh, unfortunately, John couldn't be here today, but uh, we have a wonderful substitute, Rose, Miss Rose Soini who is, she's actually the camera person on this side of the room and uh, a great Tai Chi player in her own right. Okay, so we've just done Shoot a Tiger with Bow, which is towards this wall. We're gonna just turn it a little bit so that you can see it in this direction. Okay, and so she is going to be punching towards my center with her right arm. So the first piece is neutralize. I come back and join in. Now, if she's punching, I'm back, she's not going to really be able to get me very well. She's got long arms, though. But if I just come here, I've redirected it, her energy's out, and I'm joined onto her. Now, at this point, she doesn't have much strength because her arm is fully extended. So I'm just going to turn it over and close her up, like so. So it's a little circular movement. We come back and close her up. Now, you see, as I close her up, I'm on top. She's twisted. I'm on top with my fist just facing her. At this point, I can just hit her. But and so instead, so here I am. I come back. Now, as I do that, I'm going to replace my step. I, I can't hit her very well with this hand so, uh, and this side forward, so I'm going to s replace my step, neutralize her with this hand, and then finally cl open her up and punch her. And we'll talk about the punch in a minute. This is called step up, deflect downward. Here's step up, deflect down, and punch. Okay. So after this, she then goes to push me. Okay, this is, doesn't have to necessarily one follow the other. So all I'm just gonna do is open her up and a quick little hit. It's not like the pushes we've had over on the other side. Those pushes were like a long energy throwing her away. Here, I just separate her hands and this just comes right in. And then conclusion is just going to be a breathing exercise. So that's it. Well, thank you, Rose. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So uh, if you happen to have seen the long form master course, Rose is in quite a few of the, uh, of the lessons in uh, long form. Okay, so um, let me say something about the fist. Now, a Tai Chi fist, this will be the first time we've uh, used a fist. and. I just think that it's a, it's a really interesting energetic. Okay, when we make a fist, we don't make it 
like a, a you would normally think a fist would be made, like really hard and, and tight. No. In Tai Chi, when we make a fist, we fold the joints over, and then it's not very solid in the center yet. You could stick a finger in there. And only at the moment of contact does the fist get tight, and then only for an instant. It would get tight for an instant, and that would be it. Now, the folding portion, I, I, I really like this, that we've got three joints here in the fingers, the, in each finger. So first we fold the top joint, then the middle joint, finally the bottom joint. Then the thumb covers the first two fingers. And when I look at this from above, or if you were to look at it from the side, you can see how the energy spirals inward. You see, it comes out here and spirals inward, which makes this very dense, because the energy is moving inward as opposed to moving outward. And when the energy moves outward, then um, you know, it will be expanding. But here, it's contracting. The energy is circle, circle, and keeps getting more and more um, dense. Now, in these punches, we're going to send the energy out between the two big knuckles. So the Tai Chi punch is generally moves from palm, which would be palm upward, to palm to the left side. It's only a quarter turn. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, anything else about the, the punching in the fist? Okay. So it's soft. Only at the last minute is it firm. Then it immediately becomes soft. We focus the energy in between these two knuckles. Oh yeah. It's very important that the wrist, when you're punching, be completely straight. If if there is any bend at all. It's very easy, you'd be very, it'd be very easy to hurt the wrist, I any angle at all. It needs to be completely straight. All right, so that's the, the fist. All right, so actually we already made a fist. I, I talked to all of, I didn't put the detail in it like I just did, but we made a fist for shoot a tiger with bow. I forgot. Anyway, so there, there's some good information on the fist. All right, so step up, deflect down, word and punch. Let's look at the foot movements first. So I'm headed right now, here's the beginning direction. I'm headed off to the left, straight towards this, this uh, actually I'm, I'm into this corner, but I'm going to be headed straight towards this wall. So the step up, we haven't had step up yet. It's a little, so what do you call it? a replace step. So, we're going to shift the weight back, take the weight off of the front foot. We are then going to lift the foot up and replace it at about a right angle to the direction we're headed, or going to be headed. We then put the weight on that foot, roll up the back foot, and turn the waist in this direction. We then step straight towards the wall and shift, turn, and don't forget, turn in the back toe. So now we're facing straight towards this new direction. We shift the weight back, lift up this foot. Replace this foot. Now, it's just, this is very much sort of like when we did uh, fist under elbow with the other foot. We're, we're, we could be kicking here, but we don't want to just put the weight on this foot yet. We want to have all the weight on the left foot, touch the right heel, then shift the weight onto it, roll up, make sure you're well into this right foot, step straight ahead, and shift and turn in the back toe. Now, if you don't feel like, if for some reason 
when you replace this step, and you don't step like a right angle, but you step to the corner, then when you step ahead, you're not going to have to turn in the back toe. And that might sound, that might sound like an advantage, <clears throat> but turning in the back toe energetically helps you to uh, send the energy out. It, it helps to um, really whip the energy out more. So if you don't do that, you're going to lose, if, if, you're going to lose a little bit of that waist flipping hip flip to make the energy come out. Okay, so the hands. Let's look at, let's just look at the left, the right hand at the moment. So here it is up by the temple. As we shift back, if you remember, Rose punched in and I neutralized, turning the waist and sitting back. The punches come in, I just neutralized and joined. Now her arm is resting on the top of mine. And as I replace, I took her arm over, then step ahead. Now the palm is up, and finally punch. Now let's look at it from the other direction so you can see how it looks. It drops down, it keeps the fist light, it's very light. Then as we replace the foot, the hand just pivots over, coming to the waist, and punch. Now, there's so much in here that we need to talk about. Now, if I'm looking straight, say this is you're the straight direction. Now, when we come back, there's a tendency to maybe have this angle facing some other place other than the straight direction. Then when I punch, I have to hook the thing around or do something. What we want to do always is have this facing in the direction we're going to go. Then when the hip moves, it goes straight. It's sort of like having a, a gun. You want to point the, the barrel where you want the bullet to go. So my, holding my gun out there is not going to do too, too much good if there's a, you know, some thing that needs to be shot in that direction. So I'd want to hold it here. So when we're doing this movement, as we replace it ends up, even though my body is facing a different angle, the fist is facing the direction it's going to head. Now another thing, you will see a lot of times people do it like this. And bring the arm behind the body. And then punch. For me, that's a waste of time and power and energy. If the, now, <clears throat> all energy is released from the qua and waste. The energy is generated by the leg into the qua and then the waste turns and makes the energy come out. If the hip, if the arm is back here, I generate the chi, but look, the hand is, isn't even out yet. I have to, the momentum is going to go forward, but not the power. What I want is the body's energy behind. It's like I want to push the punch rather than pull the punch. If the arm is back here, you see the waist is moving, I'm pulling the arm. If the arm is in front of the body, then I'm pushing the punch. Can you see the difference between 
pulling and pushing. Now, that's not to say that pulling doesn't have a place. Pulling has a place uh, for short, snappy, uh, less powerful kind of punches, like we did, uh, like if you did um, turn in white snake, puts out tongue. How, how, in this case, if we made a fist with this, you see, the waist is moving first, and then the hand comes out. So the waist is pulling this. Because of the arrangement of how things are, it could be, it would be tricky to, to have the waist pull it. It's just because of the dynamics of the shoulder and all of that other stuff. So line your, line your weapon, face it to where you want it to go, get your body behind it, and push it. And that will be the best for this kind of short, powerful punch. All right, so thinking about all of these. Now, the, if we look at the, uh, just at the left hand, what it's going to do is open and come down to the waist and relax. As we replace, it just comes over with the waist, and as you step, chops down. It just is relaxing down and then stays pretty much in that place as we make the punch. So if we put this all together here, first, the left hand opens, they both roll back together, neutralize. Now I've got Rose's arm underneath. Now as I replace, just turn her over. As the step hits, we open and punch. The left hand ends up by the right elbow. In the center of the body. I don't want to cross this over, and I don't want to cross this over. They're going to meet in the center of the body. This punch is generally thought of as like a solar plexus punch, sometimes called a heart punch. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't stretch out one side, just nice and square to the direction you're headed. This hand is here to protect the elbow. If for some reason my elbow were to be attacked, like he would somehow they grab it and wanted to bend it, I have this here to protect it. Also, this hand is here to protect any, this whole other side of me. The punching, this hand can block all kinds of different things around. This is called step up, deflect downward, and punch. Let's watch it again. First, left hand opens, the hands drop back, neutralize. Now we're joined, close up, replace the step, step down, and punch. Let's look at it in this other direction. You can see the hands a little better. Neutralize. Step up. And punch. Now, <clears throat> We don't want to deflect downward too soon. If you deflect downward too soon, the punch isn't ready, and then the person will have a chance to get themselves organized. You don't want to open the person up, deflect down until the heel touches, and this comes right out. Okay, so those, those three things happen together. This could be a kick. As this hand hits, this hand hits, this heel hits, and off you go. Step up, deflect downward, and punch. 
Okay, one more time, then we'll go move into the next movement. Next, it's very simple. She goes to push me, we just open. And then strike. It's a very short little choppy strike, so we just neutralize back and hit. So the hands, there's going to be a tendency to want to have open the hands a little soon. Don't open the hands until as it's striking, the hands focus. This help, this kind of twisting helps to focus the energy. Withdraw and push. Now there's a tendency when you're doing this to come back on top of this hip, lean back. Now I don't have any qua energy to do this, so I'm going to be in trouble. I'm not going to be able to be very effective. When you come back, come back into your qua, then release the qua and out it goes. And finally, conclusion. Let me, uh, let's just uh, look at this first. And then coming back. Let me do this from the front and talk a little bit about conclusion is so important. Even though I'm not giving it any martial application, there are definitely lots of possibilities. But we're just going to use it to close the form to, as a breathing, get our breathing back, ourselves organized, and get ourselves back together again. So. We're going to come back. The hands are going to lengthen and come slightly inward, as opposed to straight. They're going to end up slightly inward, fingers facing slightly inward. Then, as we turn the waist, this comes with you, only rises up a little bit. So you're coming back to the front, turning in this toe all the way so we're facing straight. So we, the arms lengthen as you come back. Here, we're going to inhale and open. So the hands are going to be separating and opening and kind of gets this feeling of gathering. Then we're going to exhale, bring the weight to the left foot, bring the right foot back to its beginning place, and we've just sort of gathered energy. So this first piece is like a nice kind of gathering feeling. Now the stance, let's look at the stance here a second. We're going to come back and turn, turning in the toe to straight, 90, our beginning direction. We then shift the weight over onto the left foot, pivot the right toe so it faces straight ahead, and replace it so that it is shoulder width and parallel. And the weight is still down. We're going to finish the hand movements, and then we're going to stand back up. Let's do the, this uh, follow along from the back. We shift back and turn, turning the toe into 90. Shift the weight onto the left foot. Our body's facing a little bit to the left, which allows the hip to replace this right foot. We then come center up, then we're going to stand up. 
One, we shift back as we lengthen and turn. The hands come with us as we turn. Gathering. As we shift back onto the foot, the hands pull the energy towards the center of the body. Now, the, hand, the energy is coming up. It comes up through the body and moves. This hand is going to circle the energy this way. This hand's going to circle the energy this way. So the two hands, once we've gathered, are going to circle the energy. And it drops back down to the lower Dantian. At that point, when, you, when the energy is dropped into the lower Dantian, we then lift up and relax back to the beginning. We wait for a moment to feel the energy sort of settle. Then we return to Wu Chi stance, mountaintop stance, Wu Chi stance, where we started. So there's a saying in Tai Chi, I think we said this before, Wu Chi to Tai Chi, Tai Chi to Wu Chi, from stillness into yin yang, from yin yang back to stillness. So that's the little journey that we make every time we do our practice, and it's a wonderful journey. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a very important part of my life and a lot of people's lives who have taken up this practice. Okay, so let's follow from, from behind. Let's go from shoot a tiger with bow, step up, deflect downward, and punch. So we neutralize, join, close them up, then when we're ready, we open them and punch. We then open back and push, strike, then conclusion, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And coming back. And that, my friends, is the short form, Yang style short form, 34 movement form. And I was thinking about this, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, it's sort of like um, a Reader's Digest version of War and Peace. The long form, we'll say, is the whole big novel with all of the intense characterizations and all the interplay, blah, 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 blah. But then if Reader's Digest did a version of it, the same story would be there, but it wouldn't have all the complexity, all the character interrelationships and all of that. So this is the essence of the long form, and hopefully um, it'll spur you on to want to go on to learn the long form, uh, because just like I said uh, originally, that this form takes about six minutes to go through the whole form. And the long form takes about 20 minutes, which I think is a more appropriate time for uh, a period of exercise. So for this, this uh, I would say, now that you're, you've learned this form, what I would do is some take a couple of minutes to work some stance practice, kind of warm yourself up, and then go through the form two or three times. And that would be a good practice. Traditionally, most teachers say you should do the form three times. First time, sort of a medium speed, just to kind of get into what you're doing. The second time, very slow, as slow as you can feel comfortable doing it. 
And then the third time, once again, as sort of a more, uh, more of a medium speed. And um, if you did the 34 movement form three times, there's 18 minutes, spend a couple of minutes, you know, of uh, warm up. So then you've got a nice 20 minute workout. And um, you've, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to get your energy going and moving and get your head quieted enough to really appreciate the movements. All right, so let's go uh, from, mm, let's go back, back to, after push, we'll do, we'll do single whip, snake creeps down, etc. Okay, single whip. Snake creeps down. Open up the back leg, drop down, straight down. Shift forward, block with the left hand, turn out. And Dingbo stance on toe, step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Step back, taking off, and then blocking up. A little bit wider than stork spreads its wings. Turn around. Or you can just step out and do kick horizontally. So here we're touching. There's a kick horizontal with the side of the foot. Then stepping down, join and punch. Step up, deflect downward and punch. Shift back and neutralize. Replace, close up. Then open up by deflecting down and punch. Withdraw and push. Finally, conclusion. Conclusion of Tai Chi Chuan. And back up. Uh, now the last, this is the um, eighth in the Teaching the Movement series. The first is going to be in this particular series is the foot, what we call the complete leg skills, all the stances and all of that. That's with Rose, actually. That's a, a very, very good DVD. So that's going to be the introductory part of this series. Then we're going to have all of our lessons. And then the last, the last um, video is going to be running through the form. So I'm not gonna feel pressured to have to run through very much right now because the last one we run through from the back, run through from the front, and, and talk about some important points. So um, we will go through the whole form now, but um, I want to, there's, a, there's something I wanted to talk a little bit about while we're, so you can be thinking about when you're practicing. Now the name Tai Chi Chuan means, basically means yin, yang, form or boxing or martial art. The martial art that's based on the principles of interaction of yin and yang. And this balance that we get from positive and negative is so important for our lives, our health, for everything. You know, if we look at our diet, if we look at our relationships, if we look at how we move, it, we need to have this balance. If, if not, we're going to end up um, you know, either you know, out of a relationship or unhealthy or whatever. So this balance is the thing that's important. So in Tai Chi, each movement is designed to have a yin phase and a yang phase. And we've talked about this. Each movement has a neutralize, gather phase, and then it has a releasing uh, phase, an opening, a releasing phase. 
And we have many, many parts of the body express this yin and yang principle. In fact, all parts of the body do. And we have many exercises, and we've talked about some of these, how the hips open and close, and the gathering to the inside of the foot and releasing from the outside. All of these are yin-yang uh, interactions that will help us in our form, master our form, to find the energy that we're looking for in our form. Let's just talk and review uh, some of these, what I call the inner journey principles some of these, and let's see, and then we'll put some of them into the, our form, our practice form. So, just in our regular bow and sit stance, we'll just, we'll just look at just the simple, the simple ones in our bow and sit stance. So, generally speaking, when you come back, you are gathering, this is yin. We're moving back towards our center, in towards our center. The center is yin. We're gathering into the center. Then we're moving forward, out, forward. We're expanding, which is yang. So we're gathering in and getting opening out. When we gather in, we move to the inside of the foot. When we move forward, we are on the heel of the foot. So we gather to the inside of the foot, we release from the, ac from the heel. The hips, remember the hips gather. When you come back, the hips rotate slightly inward, which helps to pull the energy into the foot. And when we exhale, it opens. So inhale, gather, exhale, release. The hips are rotating slightly. The pelvis is slightly tilting under, I mean back and under. When we inhale, this exaggeration, remember, it's like so. When we exhale, like so. But it's very subtle inside. Exhale, inhale, exhale. So that's basically the lower body, all those elements. Now when, I remind you, when you're doing these, do not let the knees collapse. When you're gathering back, there's a very t great tendency to close the hip, it, it close the knees. No, keep the knees, even though the, t the hips are rotating in, the knee is still straight in and out in and out, back and forward. We have the yin and yang of the Lao Kung. Remember we talked about this, that <clears throat> the hand, when we exhale, it becomes convex. When we inhale, it becomes concave. So this is yang, this is yin. This is yang, this is yin. The yin yang of the eyes, Remember? Peripherally, when it's yin, the eyeball pulls in and we have a peripheral. When it's yang, we focus and send the energy out. When it's yin, we just take in. It's like I can see the whole room. When it's yang, I'm focused in on one little point. So yin yang of the eyes. We talk about the microcosmic orbit around the body, the energy moving around the body. When it's yin, the energy drops down the front. When it's yang, the energy moves up to the top of the head. When it's yin, it goes down the front. When it's yang, it moves up. So we have this big circle of energy that's happening. So <clears throat> there, we, there's so many of these, these elements that we, that we work with as we do our form. And um, those are just some of them. So practice. Take one of these elements, practice your form, go through it, just work on these one element, and then, you know, about next time, you know, or do it a few times until it starts to feel a little natural. Then do some other, take another element and work on those. Okay? So, um, okay, so let's uh, just 
follow through the whole form. You can follow from the back, and we'll just go through the entire form. <clears throat> so this is our Wu Qi stance, or mountaintop stance, or in this case, Wu Qi stance. We're just balanced. Then we separate the energies, yin and yang. Here we inhale, and then we exhale, opening the hip. Remember, you get inhale when you gather energy to the hip. Exhale when you release energy from the hip. Inhale when you gather. Exhale when you release. Ward off left. Remember to keep, always keep one hand in the center of the body unless the person, your opponent, is behind you in some way or other. Ward off left. Right push upward. Gather to the left hip. Open. Roll back. Press. Push. Fist under elbow. Step back and repulse monkey. Remember, keep something in the center of your body in the direction your body's headed. In this case, the right hand's in the center because I'm turned to the right. Slanting flying. Open your hip, then step out. Raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Keep your weight back until the heel touches, then shift forward. Knee to let's see bottom. Fan through the back. Turn and white snake puts out tongue. Roll back, press forward and push. Single whip. Waving hands like clouds. One. Two. Single whip. Fair lady works at shuttles.
Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back, press forward and push. Single whip. Snake creeps down. Step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Turn around and kick horizontally. Shoot a tiger with bow. Step up, deflect downward, and punch. Withdraw and push. And conclusion of Tai Chi Chuan. Well, felt a little rushed there. I knew we were running out of time, but um, thank you for your attention and uh, good luck and practice well. <laughs>